Welcome, and thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to learn and accept our place in life so that we can better trust you to fulfill your purpose through us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Our text for today is found in the book of John, uh, chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. I'm reading the English Standard Version. That's John, chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Verse 16 reads, and Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not yours. What you have said is true. Now the subject for today is the influence of mothers. This is intended to be a pre-Mother's Day sermon, a pre-Mother's Day sermon titled uh, The Influence of Mothers. Mother's Day is said to be a celebration honoring mothers of the family, as well as uh, motherhood and maternal bonds and the influence of mothers in society. Influence is the capacity to affect uh, and a change in the character or development or behavior of someone or something, or the effect itself. An example would be the influence of television on violence in our lives. A synonym or uh, some synonyms of the word influence is effect or impact or control or, or sway or domination. Now, let me start with a question today. If you were this woman, and it could be either a woman or a man, a mother or a father, but you were... Uh, in a position where you met uh, Jesus and say Jesus had maneuvered you to the point where he could lead you to conviction which would prepare your heart for conversion. How would you fare under his piercing eyes and omniscient mind? It is this influence of mothers in and on society that Jesus was concerned about uh, with this woman and all of mankind. He's concerned about our influence on the people that we are near, that we meet, that we see often, and even those that we might only see once in our lifetime. The influence of mothers on those in which they are given an opportunity to make a difference in their lives. The story chosen for today's sermon, I admit, is an unusual story to celebrate Mother's Day. But withhold judgment until we're finished. In the text, as always, Jesus keeps an appointment with an individual in need and don't even realize it. None of us would make an appointment with a doctor when we are not sick. We uh, definitely would never show up to where our doctor might show up when we have no knowledge of having a possible illness. But so often, as we go through our routine of daily events, we can meet Jesus in our routines. This woman, as usual, went to a traditional place, a well, Jacob's well, her ancestor's well, and she went for the purpose of drawing water. Since Jesus knew whether or not she would show up, he was there waiting on her when she arrived. And because of Jesus, 
She just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Wherever Jesus is, it's the right place at the right time if we are there. Moses was on the backside of the wilderness and, and, and he saw a bush burning and discovered that he was in the right place at the right time. Jesus knew that she would uh, show up, but she was not expecting to meet Jesus, the living water there. She had the need, she had the needed vessel to draw water from Jacob's well, but she needed more. Jacob's well provided water daily for her and for others. It quenched their thirst and fulfilled their physical needs. And far too often, we tend uh, to our physical needs and place our spiritual needs on an indefinite holding pattern. Jesus is always concerned about the total person. And we as ambassadors must become accustomed to being concerned about the needs of the total person. And our spiritual needs are always more uh, needful than our physical needs. Jesus used a fail-proof method of getting this woman to the point where he could help her. Peter and John used this same method when uh, on a lame man uh, at the temple one day when he, he was looking for financial help. But Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Folks need Jesus in this day and age and at all times. And, and, and they said to, to the man, at the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he not only rose up and started walking, he started jumping and shouting. Hallelujah. They didn't offer him what he expected, but they offered him what he needed. It works most often when we use that same method today. The only way to prepare the soul of the heart for the seed is to plow it with conviction. My uh, good friend, Reverend Hugh T. Love Sr., uh, going on to be with the Lord now, was known to quote this poem. It's titled, The Farmer and the Plow. It goes like this, the farmer plows through the field of green. And the blade of the plow is sharp and keen. But the seed must be sown to bring forth grain. For nothing is born out of, uh, without suffering and pain. And God never plows in the soul of man without intention and purpose and pain. So whenever you feel the plow's sharp blade, let not your heart be sorely afraid, for like the farmer, God chooses a field from which he expects an excellent yield. So rejoice, though your heart is broken in two, God seeks to bring forth a rich harvest in you. And this woman also that Jesus met by Jacob's well, Jesus sowed the seed because he sought to bring forth a rich harvest in her. And he did. That was why Jesus told her to go get her husband. He forced her to admit her sin. There can be no conversion without first uh, bringing about conviction. No conversion without conviction. There must first be conviction and repentance, and then there can be saving faith. Jesus had arose, uh, aroused rather, her mind and stirred her emotions, but he also had to touch her conscience, and that meant dealing with her sins. I have no husband was the shortest statement this woman had made 
during the entire conversation there by Jacob's well. Why? Because now she was under conviction and her mouth was shut. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 uh, through 20 uh, the New International Version says, now, when, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. And therefore, no one will be able to, to declare righteousness in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. It's amazing how the truth about us will silence us. If there's anyone who knows all the truth about all of us, it's Jesus Christ. And this was the best thing that could have happened to this woman and to any of us. However, instead of listening to Jesus, she tried to get him on a detour by discussing the difference between the Jewish and Samaritan religion. It is much more comfortable to discuss religion than to face one's sin. And however, Jesus once again revealed her spiritual ignorance. She didn't know who to worship, where to worship, or how to worship. He made it clear that all religions are not equally accepted before God, that some worshipers act in ignorance and unbelief. The only faith that God will accept is that which came through the Jews. The Bible is of Jewish origin, our Savior was a Jew. The first Christians were Jews. And a religious worker in an airport once uh, told me that the world's deliverer came from Africa. But I said to him, Jesus and salvation is of the Jews. In other words, it came to us through the Jewish nation. Abraham, for instance, was the father of a nation of faith. Now, only those who have the indwelling Holy Spirit and who obey the truth can worship God acceptably. Hebrews chapter six, uh, chapter 11, rather, verse 6 says, and without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. It was a devastating statement to say that worship would no longer be li uh, limited to the Jewish temple. This ties in with uh, John chapter 2 verse 19 through 21 when Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. Put a pen there for, for week after next. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. And also, back to the day, uh, also Stephen's statement in Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 50. Uh, he said in verse 48, Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hands make all of these things? And then John's gospel clearly reveals that there is a new sacrifice in John chapter 1 verse 29 and a new temple 
in John chapter 2 verse 19 through 21 and chapter 4 verse 20 through 24. My time is limited. I don't have time to read all of these verses. And he makes the statement that uh, about a new birth in John chapter 3 verse 1 through 7 and new water in John chapter 4 verse 11. Jews reading this gospel should realize that God had established in Jesus Christ, his son, a whole new nation that's alluded to with Abraham. The old covenant law had been fulfilled through Jesus. Jesus moved this woman from being influenced by men to her being an influence on their lives. She came as an empty vessel, but left full to the point that she had met a man who made a real difference in her life. John chapter 4 verse 28 through 30 says, So the woman left her jar, her water jar, and went away into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me, all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to him. Look at the influence of this woman after having been, been influenced by Jesus. The disciples left their fishing boats and uh, they left catching catfish and buffaloes and trouts and salmon and became fishers of men. Mark chapter 1 verse 17 and 18 says, uh, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. This woman came to Jesus one way and left a different way, a different person a person that would influence the men of that town. There's a song that I want to mention now as I close. What a, that it, it, It's called What a Difference. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? My life was nothing until he set me free. What a change he has made in my life. No more compromising the wrong for the right. He gives me joy that cannot be surpassed, and I'm on a cloud from the first moment to the last. He walks with me, talks with me, tells me I am his own. He calms all of my fears and tells me that I'm not alone, that he's with me always. This same man that influenced this woman influenced me one one Thursday evening at an old church house down in Clayton, Mississippi. He influenced me when the preacher said he died for all of our sins. Can you believe that? And I said, yes, I can. And he told me about how he, he died and they buried him. But he didn't stay buried because early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And now I declare that Jesus has made a difference in my life. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your favor. And we ask now that you would give the increase by causing your word to come alive in us so that we can live according to your word and become fishers of men. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis uh, Incorporated YouTube channel. I pray that you have been blessed by today's sermon. And uh, as always, continue to mask up and wash your hands often and practice social distancing. And I'm already enjoying some of the benefits. As I said last week, do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do. 
and I can see a brighter day ahead. So do what you got to do so you can do what you want to do. And until we are all back to a very normal lifestyle, take care and be blessed. Bye-bye.